video is part of my series for very visual learners. And in this video, I'm going to tink increases. And tink is the word knit backwards, and it's a word we use to unravel one stitch at a time to get back to correct a mistake. Whenever I put out these videos about correcting mistakes, I always want to say, I hope you never need this video, but here it is. In case you need it, you can come back to it and see how to tink these increases. And I'm not sure how the schedule is going to work out. Either next week or two weeks from now, my video on tinking decreases will be out. So you can watch for that. Actually, I'll link to it here once it's available. Um, so in this video, I am going to actually work these stitches, just in case you need a refresher. I'm going to work a yarn over, a knit front back, or KFB, a make one left and a make one right, and then I'm going to go back through the row I just knit the opposite direction and tink out each one of those stitches. So let's go slow-mo. As promised, I am first going to work through these increases. Knitting up to the marker. Slip that marker and work a yarn over increase. Knitting up to the next marker. Slip that marker. I'm going to work a KFB now, which is knit front back. I knit into the front loop of that stitch then swing the tip of my needle around to the back loop. Then pull the old stitch off the left needle, just increased by one. And here at this marker, I'm going to work a make one left. Pull up the bar between the two stitches, put my needle in there from back to front. Then I like to roll my needle over to knit through the back loop of that stitch. This creates a left leaning one stitch decrease, increase, sorry. And at this marker, I'm going to work a make one right. Pull up the bar between the two stitches. Put my left needle in from back to front. And now I'm going to knit through the front loop of the stitch. Making a right leaning one stitch increase. Okay, let's go back through the other direction to undo these stitches. That first one there is a knit stitch. And here's the make one right. Because there's no stitch underneath this, we made it out of the bar between the two stitches. You can just pop that off the needle and let it go. You give the working yarn a tug and just undo it. Nothing's going to unravel.
Now I'm tinking through these knit stitches to get to the next marker. And for the knit stitches, you see I just put the tip of my left needle in the V of the stitch below. And you get a stitch that's correctly mounted, it's not twisted. And here we are at the make one left. Again, we use the bar between the two stitches to create this stitch. So if we just let it go, nothing's going to unravel. Give the working yarn a tug, and it's like it never happened. With all these increases in the fabric up to this point, there are a lot of knit stitches to get through. So now I have a KFB, and we knit in the front loop and the back loop. So the first half of this stitch, we can just let off the needle, hang on to the second half of that stitch, give it a tug, and you're left with a regular knit stitch to tink. So the purl bump half, I just dropped off the end of the needle. Now we're getting to the very easiest one, the yarn over, because we just wrapped the yarn around the right needle to create the yarn over. So you almost don't have to do anything. It'll just fall off. And since a stitch wasn't holding it up, nothing's going to unravel. These last couple of knit stitches. And there we are, ready to work the row again, without mistakes this time. And that's it. I worked the in increases and then tinked back through them. I hope that helps if you ever need to work backwards through an increase to correct a mistake. Good luck.